Hey guys, welcome to all of you on our channel that is Rachiv IAS. So friends, as you know that on our channel we are targeting the exam of civil services and for that purpose we have started multiple series on our channel that target your problems as well as mains. So in this video we will be talking about our uh, current affairs uh, MCQ series in which what we do as is clear from its name, we daily discuss MCQs from your current affairs perspective. So today is 24 September, so let's see what are the questions for the, uh, for the day. So the first question is, consider the following statements related to Pradhan Mantri Koshal Vikas Yojana. First, the scheme is implemented by the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. Second, the scheme aims to align the competencies of the unregulated sectors of the country with the National Skills Qualification Framework. Third, individuals with prior learning experience or skills will also be assessed and certified under recognition of prior learning. So we have to choose that which of the above statements is correct. So uh, friends, let me tell you that uh, first statement is correct. Yes, it is implemented by Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship and also it aims to align the competencies that uh, that the people uh, that are employed in uh, unregulated sectors uh, with the National Skills Qualification Framework. So uh, it recognizes also the prior learning skills. Uh, or experience of the individual so uh, this is recognized by giving you uh, giving recognition of prior learning uh, certificates so all of these statements are correct so the answer is uh, D that is 1 2 and 3 so here is an explanation so it distributes certificates to RPL trainees under Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana uh, and uh, more than 2 million candidates across the country have received uh, RPL certification under the Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana so this recognition of prior learning, uh, so uh, I, I think you might be knowing about million and billion. Million is basically, one million is basically 10 lakh. So two, two million means 20 lakh. So recognition of prior learning is basically, uh, this uh, This is a basically uh, part of uh, Pradhan Mantri Koshal Vikas Yojana. So uh, objectives are align the competences of the unregulated sectors of the country with the national skills qualification framework. Enhance the employment of individuals and provide with uh, them with more options for higher education. Uh, third is reduce the inequalities that are present due to privileges given to some types of skills and knowledge over the others. So this is further explanation. So let's move on to the next question. Uh, next is consider the following statements related to All India Survey on Higher Education. First, it is conducted by NGO named Pratham. Uh, second, the survey undertaken as an annual uh, web-based uh, pan-India exercise on the status of higher education since 2011-12, 2010-11 covers all the higher educational institutions in the country. So which of the uh, statements is correct? So we have to choose the correct statement. Let me tell you friends that only second statement is correct. Uh, uh, that is uh, this survey is undertaken on an annual basis so it is a web based pan and d exercise on the status of higher education in the country and it covers all higher educational institutions in the country so uh, it is not uh, conducted by ngo pratham so basically uh, pratham is uh, annual status uh, it really pratham is an ngo which rele releases annual status of education report that is a report uh, and it is basically focused on uh, primary education primary and uh, secondary i think and uh, this survey is basically uh, it just collects data on several parameters like teacher student enrollment programs examination results education finance and infrastructure so it was uh, it, it is basically released by recently uh, uh, human resource development ministry so key findings are th that uh, there is gender gap is narrowing uh, so more girls are in uh, two states that is in up and karnataka so there are now more females in the age group of 18 to 23 enrolling for higher education than male students so female enrollment has improved from 47.6% to 48.6% so that is a positive point so gross enrollment ratio has increased marginally from 25.8 to 26.3 so in absolute terms enrollment increased from uh, 3.66 crore to 3.7 crore crore students in the same period so uh, this uh, 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 gross enrollment ratio for uh, scheduled castes has uh, and scheduled tribes have uh, has also increased so you can see that uh, the gross enrollment uh, ratio for uh, obviously for SCs and STs uh, is quite less uh, that is uh, just 23% in case of scheduled castes 
and 17.2 percent for just scheduled tribes uh, so number of uh, universities have uh, also grown so you might be wondering that what is gross enrollment ratio so this basically gross enrollment ratio is the kind of we can say uh, uh, is taken into uh, consideration when we see that okay these are the students that are uh, that these are the persons uh, that are of the age that uh, that that can go to college for example if someone has completed his plus two or uh, his uh, his twelfth class then uh, he is uh, 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 he is obviously uh, of the age he or she is of the age that she can he or she can join the college so uh, total number of individuals are taken into consideration and it is checked that how many have enrolled for the colleges for the higher education so that is basically gross enrollment ratio so number of faculty has also increased so everything is improving so preferred stream at the post graduation level uh, is basically uh, uh, in under in this undergraduate level it is humanities management seems to be preferred stream at the post graduate level so science and engineering technology registered relatively more enrolled in MPhil and a PhD programs. So preferred the stream at the UG level is basically in arts, humanities, social science just 16.5 students are pursuing science following by commerce with 14.1% engineering is the fourth choice now. So this is an important report so you can use this data in your main answers as well. Next is the partnership to advance clean energy is seen in news uh, uh, between which two nations. So recently partnership is there uh, so it is uh, basically uh, between which of the nations so it has been asked so india brazil india us india uk and d none of the above so friends the answer is uh, b india and us so this ministry of new, new and Re uh, renewable energy awards uh, grants to uh, four projects in second round of the space setup fund program so space setup fund is basically constituted by U uh, india and usa so it is a quite uh, old fund uh, so uh, 50 crore indian national rupee that is uh, us uh, dollar that is 7.9 million dollar us dollar fund jointly capitalized by governments of the republic of india and united states of america so it is a joint fund to provide the early stage grant funding to accelerate the commercialization of innovative of grid clean energy products uh, systems and business models so this is more detail let's move to the next question next is head on generation technology seen in news is related to a railways b uh, uh, solar power c satellites d none of the above so we have to choose that which of the above statements is correct let me tell you friends that the uh, answer is uh, a that is railways so railway ministry is upgrading all link hoffman bush coaches with the head on generation technology so this is a uh, qu quite uh, uh, old term that uh, that uh, consistently figures in newspapers so this uh, what is the softman bush technology so it is a type of technology uh, that is used in making your coaches uh, the rail coaches but uh, this uh, link hoffman uh, bush coaches uh, suffer from uh, the problem uh, that whenever any uh, 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 kind of uh, accident uh, it takes place uh, then one uh, one coach uh, uh, kind of we can say uh, 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 gets toppled upon the other so this uh, this uh, in fact uh, uh, it affects the entire uh, rail uh, so uh, the, the casualty also increases the injuries also increases in that context but uh, where, what is the what is this head on generation technology it ensures that uh, it is uh, 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 your, uh, uh, it is more accidental proof so it does not cause much harm and also then it will lead to uh, it will lead to cost efficiency and less polluting so then uh, hotel load the load of air conditioning lights fans and pantry by drawing electricity from the overhead electric lines through the uh, pantograph so how it is different from end on generation so trains hotel load uh, the load of uh, air conditioning lights and fans and pantries provided with electricity from two large diesel generators which supply three phase power at uh, 750 volts 50 hertz to the entire length of the train so what is its uh, benefit uh, they have one emergency generator car attached so extra extra space will be there and uh, then most passengers will be there uh, there then uh, uh, can be accommodated and it will be cost efficient and uh, will also be it will generate uh, uh, your uh, less pollution and noise and uh, emissions will also be uh, uh, reduced uh, reduced and thus uh, reduction in emissions could also help the railways accrue carbon credits and trade them on the international market next is consider the following statements related to disaster management act 2005 First, the National Disaster Management Authority with Prime Minister as its chairperson is a statutory body for disaster management in India. Uh, second, National Institute of Disaster Management is established under the Act. 
So which of the above statements is correct? Friends, this is a quite easy answer uh, question. Both of these statements are correct. Yes, there is a National Disaster Management Authority and it is chaired by Prime Minister. So it is, there is a special act for that. Uh, so this bo the body has been created under it. So National Institute of Disaster Management is also established under it. So to, uh, to understand the disaster signs and how to manage and uh, uh, prevent it uh, and uh, deal with it effectively and efficiently. So it is a statutory body for disaster management in India. It was constituted on uh, uh, 27 September 2006 in accordance with the Disaster Management Act 2005. So Prime Minister is the chairperson So one, uh, and nine other members and one such member to be designated as vice chairperson. So mandate is basically to coordinate response to natural or man-made disasters and for capacity building in disaster resiliency and crisis responses. Uh, so National Institute of Disaster Management has been constituted under it. Next, next is which of the following has not been included in UAPA Act? A. Babar Khalsa International, B. Khalistan Zindabad Force, C. Khalistan Liberation Force. So we have to choose that which of the above uh, uh, D is none of the above. So we have to choose that which of these has not been included in uh, Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. So answer is friends D that is none of the above is uh, in it. So all of these uh, are out of uh, this national uh, UAPA Act. Uh, and next is here consider the following statements related to folk dance gar Garba. First, Garba is traditional form of dance which originated in Gujarat. Uh, second, only men practice this form of dance. So we have to choose that which of the above statements is correct. Let me tell you friends that only one statement is correct and that is first. first. So Garba is basically, uh, uh, it, uh, it is practiced in Gujarat. So only men practice, uh, the second statement is incorrect because we female also participate in this form of dance. So it is a dance uh, that originated in uh, the Gujarat region. It is from, performed during the nine day Hindu festival Navratri. So either the Garba, Garba uh, uh, lamp or an image of goddess Durga is placed in the middle of concentric circles and the people dance around the center bending sideways at every step their arms making sweeping gestures each movement ending in a clap. Next is consider the following statements related to endosulfan seen in news. First endosulfan is a pesticide and insecticide that is known to be highly toxic because of its potential for, bio, uh, for bioaccumulation and role as an endocrine disruptor. Second endosulfan is legally banned in India. So which of the above statements is correct? Let me tell you friends that only one statement is correct and that is first statement. So yes, it, uh, it, can, uh, it has uh, uh, disastrous uh, outcomes uh, when it bioaccumulates. So uh, it is not legally uh, banned. So only one statement is correct, and that is uh, first A only, uh, one only. So uh, it is an organochlorine insecticide, which was first introduced in 1950s and is commonly known by its trade name uh, Theodon. Uh, Theodon. Theodon. So it is sprayed on crops like uh, cotton, cashew, fruits, tea, paddy, tobacco. So environment basically uh, it's get it gets accumulated in food chains leading to higher doses causing uh, causing problems. So endo if endosulfan is released to water, it is expected to absorb the to the sediment and may bioconcentrate in aquatic organisms. So there are also other effects, so you can read them by pausing the video. Next, let's move to the next question. Next is, consider the following statements related to Central Advisory Board of Education. First, it is a statutory body created to advise both central and state governments in the field of education. Second, its advice is binding on the center and state governments. So we have to choose that uh, which of the above statement is correct. Let me tell you friends though, that both of these statements are incorrect. So the answer is D, neither one nor two. So Central Advisory Body of Education, it is the highest advisory body to advise the central and state governments in the field of education. So it was established in 1920 and dissolved in 1923 as the measure of economy. So it was revived in 1935 and has been reconstituted in July 2004. So it has a particular important, particularly important role to play at the present juncture in the view of significant socio-economic and socio-cultural developments taking place in the country and for the review of the national policy on education which is also due. So composition it consists of nominated members representing various interests in the addition to elected members from Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha and the representatives of the government of India, state governments and the UT administrations. Now let's move on to the last question of the day. Last question of the day is consider the following statements related to West Bank. First, the territory is, conf is of conflict between Israel and Palestinians. Second, the West Bank is a landlocked territory which is bordered by Jordan to the east and the green line separating it and the Israel in the north, south and west. So which of the above statements is correct? Uh, so friends, the answer is uh, C, that is both 1 and 2. So solution is C. Uh, so West Bank is basically, it is a 
disputed territory and India, uh, Israel has cut off power to some parts of the occupied West Bank due to outstanding payments. So key facts are that it is a landlocked territory which is bordered by Jordan to the east and green line separating it and Israel in the north, south and west. So here you can see in the diagram in the photograph uh, here uh, this is West Bank so Israel is uh, there in the, on the north as well, on the west as well, on the south as well. So here there is you can see Jordan is there so Jordan is to the east. So it also this West Bank is, uh, uh, is, uh, is here with also with the Dead Sea. So uh, uh, it has a basically <coughs> it is under dispute. So uh, uh, it has been claimed that uh, Israel has been uh, promoting uh, illegal uh, occupations or colonies there of Israeli people, uh, so that uh, it can then ultimately control the entire territory. So it was occupied by Israel during uh, the Six Day War in 1967, and under the, the Oslo Accords, which was signed uh, by the Israel and the Palestine Liberation Organization in September 1993. The two sides agreed that the West Bank and Gaza Strip would be treated as a single territorial unit. So uh, this you can see Gaza Strip, and you can see this West Bank. So this is all about friends today's video and today's MCQs. If so, if you like these questions, if you like the video, then do ensure that you like it, share it with your friends and also ensure that you subscribe to our channel. And lastly friends, if you want to remain in touch with the updates that we do, uh, you can join our telegram channel, the link of which is shown on your screen and will also be provided in the description box. So in case you are interested to get in touch with the, uh, with the updates that we do on our channel or on our, on our YouTube channel or on our, our Telegram channel then you are most more than welcome to join this Telegram channel and so you can check the link in the description box. So friends also we have a website that is www.hyes.co.in on which you can visit. Link of it will also be provided in the description box. So you can visit this website and you can, uh, uh, can read about various articles that we keep on our po posting on this website. Uh, that are important from your exam point of view and if you have any queries if you have any doubts you can mail us at chyes21 at the rate gmail.com or you can also contact us at 8968920720 and lastly friends if you want to subscribe to the pdfs of these mcqs then you can check the description box so there is a subscri subscription link shared there so you can subscribe uh, uh, using that link so obviously there is a minimum fee for the subscription and that is rupees 99 per month and it has been solely kept for the purpose of uh, our more motivation so that we people can be motivated to help you people so if in case you are interested to join then you can uh, check the link in the description box or you can also mail us or, us or contact us uh, we will share the link with you there uh, if you contact us so thank you friends this is, uh, this is all about today's video have a very nice day ahead do ensure that you subscribe to our channel so thank you thank you very much